Hi folks, it's Evo here from Funimus Lure Company. And welcome to part three of our special three-part sheephead series. I'm here with the boatless angler. Hi everybody. And today folks, we're in the kitchen because part one was catching sheephead, part two was cleaning sheephead, part three is going to be cooking sheephead. And don't mind my hands, I was doing a little bit of wine making. They're a little bit stained, but they're very, very clean. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to try two different methods today, folks, for cooking sheep head. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's many different ways you can cook them. The meat is very, very firm. Um, so there's many different ways you can do them. We're going to do them two different ways today. And uh, what do we got here? We've got some, uh, we're going to do a flour. Uh, we've got one egg. One egg, some breadcrumb. And some breadcrumb. But what we're going to do with the egg, we're going to add one tablespoon of water. We've got a tablespoon of water here. You want to make that egg wash? Sure. Okay, so we're making an egg wash. By cutting it with a little bit of water, it thins it up a bit. And it's always a nice thing to do when you're uh, when you're frying fish. So we've got an egg wash going here. Now to the breadcrumbs, we're going to actually season the breadcrumbs uh, before we use them. So uh, Antonio's already chopped up some parsley. Parsley is probably one of the best um, herbs you could use when it comes to frying fish. Parsley and fish just kind of go hand in hand. So we've got some parsley in the breadcrumb, and we're also gonna put some paprika in the breadcrumbs. So we're seasoning our bre breadcrumbs lightly. We've got some sea salt here, but we're going to salt the fish afterwards, as opposed to putting the salt in the breadcrumb. So once that's done, uh, what I like to do as well, before I cook any fish, I like to make sure that they're nice and dry because you've washed your fillets and they've, they've uh, taken on some water. So a little bit of uh, paper towel, and uh, go ahead, Antonio. A little bit of paper towel. Dry your fillets very nicely uh, before you go to cook them. And especially when you're frying fish, as you know, water and hot oil don't mix very well. Splatters like crazy. So this also helps in that regard as well. So it cooks better and helps with the splashing. Okay, so we've got them patted dry. Yep. This is the smaller sheep head we caught, right? We caught a bigger one too. We're gonna cook that one as well, but uh, we'll start with this small one. And uh, what I like to do you want to cook them whole or I usually like to cut them? Cut them? I like sure. to cut them. The reason I like to cut my fillets, if you cut them, like that one could be cut in... You what could use... Yeah, there's a nicer knife right there. Perfect. I like to cut them in like two or three pieces. This, this fillet is relatively small, so if you want, you could do it in two. Just cut it in half. Sure. Okay, let's just cut them in half. But when they're smaller, they cook all around much nicely, uh, very, very nicely. Um, and they cook, they cook better. They crisp up better. I think they just cook better. You get more batter around them too. Right? That's true. You do more get more batter. On them. That's true. More seasoning and, and it's quicker. Yeah. Right? That's true. That's true. It cooks quicker. So. Am I diving right in or? Yeah, dive right <laughs> in. So he's diving in. That's just regular white flour. So you, you could use whole wheat flour if you want. We're just using plain old white flour. So dip it in the flour. From the flour, you dip it in the uh, into the egg egg wash, and once it's uh, dipped in the egg, just um, let the excess egg uh, drip off the fillets, and then from there they go right in the breadcrumb mixture. Okay. Into the breadcrumb mixture. Perfect. This bowl's handy. Yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, got okay, all that nice parsley on it. Let's see what you got here. Put it in the, let's put it in the plate here. Sure. We'll get another plate, I just wanna show. So that's basically kind of what we've got right now. So what Antonio's gonna do, we're gonna do those other three fillets. And while he's doing that, we're gonna put the pan on here. And when it comes to frying fish, I like to use my preferred, my number one preferred is grapeseed oil. I like to use grapeseed oil. If I can't or if I don't have grapeseed oil, then I'll lean towards sunflower oil. Those are my top two choices. But of course, you could use regular vegetable oil, canola oil. Uh, I just shy away from olive oil. I use olive oil a lot in my cooking, but not when I'm frying fish. So it's usually some form of a vegetable oil or today, my preferred grapeseed oil. And I like to put in, uh, we're not gonna really deep fry, but I like to have the bottom of the pan coated with oil and maybe then some just a little bit. And that allows for a really, really nice fry, uh, more of a shallow fry than a, than a deep fry. All right, so we're gonna get this going. 
while Antonio prepares those. Okay. How are we doing? Yep, one left. One more left? Yep. Excellent. Yeah, that, that, that sheep head, the fillets, the meat on the sheep head, eh? very, very firm. Very right? nice, yeah. Now, a lot of people don't eat sheep head, but honestly, they're missing out because the meat and the texture, phenomenal. Just phenomenal. All right, so now Antonio's going to laugh at me because I'm going to actually measure the temperature with this temperature gun, and it's actually 400 and 410 degrees, so it's plenty hot. Now, you wouldn't have used this, right? I would have not used that. No. You wouldn't have used it, but you know, 360 degrees, 400 degrees, the grapeseed oil, you can get it good and hot, uh, and you can start cooking. So you're, you're ready to cook. That's probably about 420 right now. Now, how would you cook it if you didn't have a Well, you can look at the heat? oil. You can see, if you actually get into there, you can see it kind of breaking the surface. Little tiny bubbles, not quite bubbles. Okay. Or you can take your fish and just, just put a corner in there. If it starts to sizzle, you're, you're good to go. Yeah. Okay, that's on No technology needed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the sizzle method, right? The sizzle method. Okay, yeah. the sizzle method. Well, you know what? I have that temperature uh, gun, so I like to use it. But you're right, you could easily, easily check it. It's always that. good to drop your fish away from yourself, just in case the oil splashes. Okay. Yeah. And one at a time. One at a time. Yeah. Now, how long are you going to cook these? How do you, when you how many times are you going to cook them? How, you, how many times are you going to flip them? I'm going to only flip them once. Okay. Um, and what you're looking for, you got to look at the thickness of your fish. Yeah. Right, if you have a really thick fish, it's going to, Take longer to cook, but these are relatively thin. Yeah. So you just look at the outside. You know, it'll start to discolor further up the side. You can take a look here. Yeah. Actually, you can see right here. Exactly. If you, if you come in closer, you'll be able to see. Right. You see what Antonio's talking about. Yeah. There. So it'll turn a little white on the sides, and then once it starts getting, when you see it getting white halfway. Yeah. It's a good time to flip it. I'm not quite ready. Not see quite ready yet. A bit here. Mm. Browning a bit there. And we want our nice and brown. We want them crispy. <laughs> nice and crispy, nice and brown. Okay. And but with the sheep head, right? You don't necessarily have to worry because it's such a firm fillet. Right. It's not going to break apart on it. No, it won't. So right now, these two thinner ones are ready to flip. Okay. So yeah, the other ones are a little thicker, right? Yep. This is more of the. Oh, look at that. That's okay. beautiful. A nice crust on it. Oh my. Oh, that looks fantastic. Nice. Oh, that looks good already. Look at that. So, you know, I like my, my fish ground like that. You do. Know? Especially do. if you're using a batter, like a beer batter. I like it just a little bit brown. So now these thicker ones are ready to Ready flip. to turn? Look at that. Beautiful. That's gorgeous. And it's, like you said, the sheep heads, they're so firm. I can grab it and flip them like it's a piece of meat. Yeah, if you've never eaten sheep head, and like I said earlier, a lot of people, most people don't. So the, the meat is white. It's flaky and it's firm. Those are the three key things you're looking for in a fish fillet, and the sheep heads got them. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it hasn't really cooked much, maybe about a minute on the first side. Yeah. Roughly. A minute and a half. A minute and, and a half. half. Probably the same on the next side. Okay. Um, you can always lower it and leave it on a little bit longer. Oh, what want. do you have it on? Medium or high? Uh, Medium? Like Middle of medium and, and low, so I started well when, when the oil was getting hot and it was a little higher, and then I lowered it as we were putting the fish in. Okay, yeah. that's probably a good idea too, right? Put it on high, get it up to get it up to heat. When it's at the heat, Low bring water. it down a bit. Yeah, yeah. Because when you drop your fillets in there, it actually brings the of temperature of the oil down. Yeah. So it's a good thing we brought it up over 400 because 360 is where you want to start frying at least at 360 degrees. So we brought it up to 420, 430. So when you drop those in, the fact that it got a little cooler, no big deal. No, exactly. So these two are done. And those are definitely done, those thin ones. Here, I have a plate yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. I was ready for you, Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks really good. So you can just tell how firm it is. Yeah, look at look that. At, look, it doesn't even bend. It doesn't bend. <laughs> it doesn't even bend. It. Oh, <laughs> there it goes. Uh, Tongs were not the best, but uh, here we go. Okay. These ones maybe a little more. Not much longer, I don't think, right? Yeah, I know they're a little bit thicker, but 
Oh, they're, they're done. Uh, they're done. Don't eh? leave them. Yeah. yeah. See the parsley has a nice color too, eh? It has flavor and color. Nice. Okay, you want to salt them now? Please. Turn off the heat. Off with the heat, that's a good idea. A little bit of salt. Perfect. Sea salt, just a bit of sea salt. Nice. Okay, so we're going to let these cool. And let's get our second batch of uh, sheep head going, but we're definitely going to dig into those real soon. Okay. Okay. Now that we've got those ones cooked, these ones are going to do a little bit differently. So we'll start off by cutting these fillets. We're going to cut them a little differently because we're going to do, as I mentioned, the sheep head have a very firm texture. And because of that, the way I can explain it, the texture is like a shrimp. It's got the texture of a shrimp. So with the sheep head, you could make what they call poor man shrimp. And, uh, and it actually is really, really good. And it's so simple to do. So the first thing you need to do is cut your filet as Antonio's doing there. Just cut them into strips and you could cut them. Okay. I wouldn't go any thicker than that. That's, that's plenty thick. Uh, in fact, you could probably cut those in half too. If you, you want me to? to. Yeah. Sure, Why don't you even do cut those, those wide ones, cut them in half. Okay. So he's cutting them lengthwise. Uh, along the lateral line that way instead of widthwise and uh, we're cutting them in the strips more or less like a shrimp same thickness as a shrimp more or less uh, because we want that uh, we want that illusion more or less of, of, of a shrimp so uh, while he's doing that we've got water on the boil I'm gonna put some uh, salt into the water so where's our sea salt right there yeah. all right so when you salt your water Salt your water just like you would with a pasta sauce as you're making pasta. So the general rule that they use for cooking uh, pasta is have the water salty like the ocean. So I like to put in about I like to put in about a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half in this in this smaller pot of water. And you notice when you put the salt in. It, everything erupts, so it's a good idea to put a little in first, let it erupt, and then you add more. All right, so he has the strips. You have one fillet cut. We still have another fillet to cook, but we're gonna do one one at a time here. So you can see the strips. That's nice, Antonio. Yeah, nice, eh? Nice. Uh, yeah, about a quarter inch thick, maybe a little thicker, three eighths. And we're just gonna drop them in. Drop them in the boiling water, boiling salted water. Yep. All right. Now these don't have to cook very long. Again, depending on the thickness of the fish that you're cooking, a minute, one, two minutes is plenty. And if you're, if you're a little leery after two minutes, you can shut off the stove and just leave it, let it sit in the boiling water. It'll continue to cook in that water. Uh, and the other thing to keep in mind, because there's so many fish that he just put in, it brought down the temperature of the water. So you want to bring it to a boil again. I should make that clear. Bring it to a boil, <laughs> let it boil for one, two minutes. I would say let it boil for two minutes to be safe and then they'll be cooked and ready, uh, ready to eat. And the only ingredients for this recipe that we're going to use, the salt is already in the water, so we don't have to add any salt. It's gonna get flavor from the water. And we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of paprika uh, on, the, on the sheep head when it comes out, again, to give the illusion of the shrimp. Yeah. Right? It exactly. gives a little bit of color, right? It's not going to be orange like, a, like you know, or pinkish or orangey like a shrimp, but it'll be, uh, it'll be colored. And of course, a little bit of seafood sauce. So we're going to have a little bit of seafood sauce with the sheep head. Perfect. So it's almost coming to a boil. I like it to come to a more vigorous boil uh, as opposed to a rolling boil. And in order to help it along, we'll just put the lid on. Okay, as you can see, we got a vigorous boil there, and it's been boiling for about a minute now. So they should be ready. In fact, they are ready. They are ready. They are definitely ready. And it's only been a minute, but a minute at that vigorous boil. Okay. Drain them off. And I want to show oops, this one here, for example. Look at that. See how it's even curled? It's curled up like a shrimp. Isn't that something? When you cut them lengthwise, They'll have a tendency to curl a little bit, and that adds to the poor man's shrimp uh, theme. Okay. Okay. Those are nice. That's all. One more. One Another more. one hiding in there. Straggler. We have one that curled up really nicely. Let's lower this. All right. 
Okay, that one curled up the best, so we're gonna put that one right in the front. And let's just sprinkle a little bit of paprika on these. There. And then what we'll do is we will add some seafood sauce. And those are now ready to be eaten. And these you could eat just like a shrimp. Just dip, texture, Good. taste. Honestly, mm, hey, Very that texture. Firm. If you had, if you were blindfolded, you wouldn't really know that these were not shrimp. They're really good, actually. <laughs> Especially with the shrimp sauce. So, I do want Excellent. to grab, they're good, eh? I know. Okay, and now we got to dig into our other plate. Where do we put it? Oh, it's already on the kitchen table. But we're going to get into that plate as well. But you know what, folks? Sheephead. Next time you're on the water and you, you get, and the smaller ones cook up better than the bigger ones do, right? And they taste better. Yeah. They sure. do, right? Yeah. They taste better. Mm -hmm. So next time you get one, maybe you can hang on to it. And if you haven't seen it, how to catch sheephead, I'll put a link here for you. How to clean sheephead, we'll put another link here for you. And now you've got how to cook sheephead. And eat. And eat. And this is really, really good. I want to thank you ever so much for joining us on today's episode of Thunderous Fishing Tips. And I hope you've enjoyed this special series. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, good luck and good fishing. Excellent. I'll take that. Yeah. Thanks, Antonio. <laughs>